Okay, hello, Niels Gop. Hello. Uh, uh, so your documentary, Images of a Nordic Drama, focuses on the art scene surrounding Axel uh, Waldemir Johansson, and I'm sure I screwed up that name. Uh, so let's start off with talking about the importance of this painter in your mind. Yeah, I, I think it's important in my mind because he's showing up the, the side of Norway uh, that we don't see, that we want to, sorry, that we want to hide. <laughs> uh, and we are not very proud of the, uh, that side because it's about poverty, it's about you know, p prostitutes, uh, drunks, you know, the culture that we want to hide and we don't want to present outside Norway. We know it's there, but we don't want to, uh, to present it. Yeah, it sounds like civilization to me, and I can see why that would scare away the, the sort of art-going crowd, I guess. Your typical yeah. art-going crowd, yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, the, uh, all the, the exhibitions that are uh, abroad uh, in, 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 outside Norway, they are sponsored by, like, the oil companies and uh, the mm -hmm. richest people that we have, and they will choose the paintings, and they choose the nicest paintings, the, you know, the scenery, fjords, the nice part of Norway. These paintings aren't uh, or about the nice part of Norway. It's like, it's like the uh, what I would call the truth. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So yeah. they're, they're very interesting, very dark uh, images for sure. Uh, what did you want to accomplish by making the documentary? It's putting a light on the, uh, the decision makers that are deciding what's good and what's bad and uh, Putting the uh, making the rules that this this is supposed to be good and this is bad, and I I don't, always don't agree with them. I think I think that uh, uh, art shouldn't be like that. Art should be about people pouring and uh, creating emotions. Mm -hmm. I, I like the fact that somebody hates the pictures of Axel Valmar mm -hmm. because that's emotions, and also I like the uh, the, the people who really like him. So mm -hmm. the uh, that's I feel that's what art is all about. It's to um, to uh, provoke and uh, you know create emotions, make yeah, people. You, you, you definitely spark a discussion, and that is like inherently dramatic, you know, cinematic territory, right? Yeah, I think the uh, for the elite, you know, the uh, the, the the few people that are making all the decisions about mm -hmm. art. Mm -hmm. I think they, they, they are, if, they are, if they are questioned, somebody says that, I, I think you're wrong. Yeah. They get scared, you know, and they start to fight back. Mm -hmm. And they can be really cruel. They can use methods that's really uh, scary, especially in a country like Norway that's supposed to be a, a clean country without corruption. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this uh, movie touches into the corruption of uh, Norwegian art uh, life. Because if you have enough money, you can you can you can have a big room in the new national museum. If if you have enough money, if you don't have money, then you, you can forget the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, how did you become familiar with the art collector that we see in the documentary? It was because I was I was in um, Vienna uh, mm -hmm. seeing a, an exhibition that was called Edvard Munch und das Unheimliche. Unheimliche is the uncan uncanny. You know mm. the uh, the things mm. that we don't like, and I was uh, at that time I was trying to make a horror movie, and I was oh. interested in, in uncanny pictures, and uh, mm. that was like Edvard Munch, uh, Guy, Gaia, Goya, mm. and uh, a, a lot of Austrian painters. Um, great, you know, trying to fi find out how do you make pictures that can that makes you feel like a bit scared and uncanny and uncomfortable. How do they do it? So this was the, uh, the place to be for me at that, that time. And there was this painting, so Axel Waldemar. And they were, I found that they were really scary. And uh, there was a big exhibition with the Axel Waldemar pictures. And they are like a, a really big, big canvas pictures, like two meters high. And you know, mm -hmm. and when I saw those pictures, I got really scared. So I, I felt like, a bit uncomfortable, like I did when I saw the first first time I saw Edward Munch's paintings, mm. because like the scream is not a comfortable painting to, to watch in, in real life. So yeah. uh, I, I and I didn't know who Axel Waldemar was, so I asked the, the, the people at the who were doing the exhibition, and they gave me Håkon Meren's name and phone number, 
So when I came back to Norway, I called him and asked, who is this painter? And then he told me the story. And I think the story was so uh, fascinating and uh, unbelievable that yeah. I got interested in it. Tell people how he found the paintings. Yeah, well, he was invited to a barn. Right. A, a very old barn outside Oslo uh, to watch some strange pictures, as the guy said. And he said, no, no, I don't want to see that. Because Håkon was a kind of a, a very, he was a great collector at that time. He was like collecting pictures of the finest artists, like uh, Klimt from uh, from um, uh, Austria, uh, and then selling it for a, a lot of money. So he was like a well-known collector at that time when he was young. And then he went to this barn and uh, just to be friendly with the guy who would show us pictures. Mm -hmm. And he came into the barn and he told me that he was like starting to sweat and, and being like, it was like uh, something <laughs> happened, some strange things happened with him. And he told me that this, this exhibition in the old barn changed his life forever. Uh, and that's the, kind of the, uh, that's the kind of the stories that you want to tell. In, it's in, a great in, story. In how do yeah. people can say that? Um, so you, you've made a lot of feature films, including the Oscar nominated movie uh, Pathfinder. But what did you learn about filmmaking through making this documentary? The, the, the one thing I learned that it's so much more difficult to make a good documentary. It's much easier to make uh, feature movies. Really? Documentary is really, really huh. hard because uh, I'm now shooting a movie. It will take me two months to shoot it. Mm. Uh, the, the documentary you saw took me five years. Wow. Because you, you can't plan anything. Mm. You, can, you can shoot for like uh, two weeks and you mm. can't use anything or what because it's all lies, it's all people wanting just to talk and blah, 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 blah. So uh, it's so hard to, to plan. And, uh, and you, have to, you have to continue shooting until you have all the uh, material that you feel that you need. And then when we stopped shooting the uh, documentary, then somebody told me that one of the, the paintings of Axel Valdemar was in the Metropolitan Museum in uh, New York. And I couldn't believe that. I thought that was a joke. So uh, we called the uh, Norwegian embassy and they said, yes, there's a painting called The Man on the Diving Board and that's Axel Valdemar. So we had to, and that was in the COVID-19 period. So we couldn't go yeah. there to, to, to shoot. So we had to find a team in New York and they went to the Metropolitan and uh, they did this, uh, the, the, the end thing of the movie, which was really magic because you, that's the part, with, that's the thing with the documentary, you never know what to get. Right. And this was like, like a big gift. We needed that image at the end of the movie. That's really interesting. I, it's not the answer I expected. I thought, I don't know, I don't know. I thought it would be harder to make a feature film. Oh, you can you can plan everything. It's all in the planning. You can, I mean, you, planning. Can, you can plan all. You can buy the uh, you know stuff that you need. You can get the actors that you want. True. So you can plan the whole thing, and, and movie making isn't the planning. Okay. Huh. All right. So would you make another documentary in the future based on this experience? Well, I have to see how this uh, how it ends, how the show ends in hot dogs. If everything goes well, yeah. um, I will of course. Uh, uh, play, I will, yeah, if if people like the movie, then I yeah, I, okay. I would like to do an, another movie. Cool. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, good luck with that. Uh, so th there is a lot of harsh disagreement with people over uh, the uh, Axel's merit in this documentary. Uh, why do you what do you think people are get so uh, charged or, or 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 triggered with when someone disagrees with their take on art? Um, I, I I don't know why, but uh, I think that's hmm. the uh, that was the thing that I like with the uh, the situation because it was so much emotions there. It was like hmm. somebody really hates the, the 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 paintings and want them to uh, end up in the garbage mm -hmm. and. So, while all the people like say that this is a genius work, it's so important part of Norwegian history and heritage, blah, 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 blah. You know, this, the, the, the emotions mm. which, uh, which are there, have been there for 30 years, mm -hmm. uh, are still going on, uh, which I think is part of the, um, the art. Art should do that. Mm. Art should evoke emotions, not only good, but also bad emotions. So like, I think that's the... Uh, 
that's that's what art should do yeah i guess that's that's how, how you know you have something I maybe mean, like if you invoke passion yeah 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 if so, someone just look so, more about it eh, probably sucks yeah yeah so yeah if you, had, if you had found some pictures that nobody cares about yeah uh then there's no movie there's no uh story absolutely so will you be attending the hot docs uh festival for the premiere of images of a nordic drama that's that's the part i'm really sorry for because i'm shooting a movie now and i'm on a location i couldn't go there because ah. I, have to, I have to follow the schedule and the plan oh, i asked them to give me one day so i can get there but no mm -hmm. but the producer will be there oh, okay yeah Oh, that's so too, I really, too bad though. Have you, you've, I'm sure you've been to TIFF of, uh, uh, throughout your career. Pardon? Have you been to, to the Toronto International Film Festival before? No, I, uh, no, I haven't been there. I, I, I shot the movie in Canada. Uh, okay. And I had the movie in the, there were two festivals uh, mm -hmm. at that time. It was Toronto and then well, there was another One festival. World Film? Was it One World? Uh, yeah, I can't remember that. That was a big, nice city and a very nice right. uh, uh, film festival. I was there and that was a great uh, experience for me. So I would love to be there uh, at Hot Talks, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see how people react and see reactions, which is a good thing to sit in a, in, in a, in a movie theater and, and watch movies with the audience. What's That's it like as a director generally at a film festival? To be a director in a film festival? Yeah, what's it like to have your 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 projects play a film festival? What's that like? That's just very important. That's you know mm -hmm. uh, everybody likes to be in a, in a, in a film festival mm -hmm. because you can experience uh, the meeting between the audience and the, and your movie. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's the best place to be, uh, and you learn so much about that because. Because you can see how the uh, people react, the audience react to the movie. You can, you can maybe meet somebody in the bar and uh, right, talk right. about the movie, which, uh, which is important. Okay, okay. So when you're in an art gallery and you're looking at, at paintings by someone like Axel or, or anyone, let's just say, uh, anyone worthwhile, how long will you examine the piece? No, I'm a, I'm a quick one there. Uh -huh. I, see if, uh, I can see a lot of uh, paintings and I can stop with one paintings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I'd be really interested in the, in the, in the painting and uh, and then start wonder why this painting uh, made me stop and then we'll go and look at the the colors and the uh, painting style then I can use a lot of time mm. but for the most pictures I will just have a glimpse and then yeah, I will just you know you'll breeze through okay yeah yeah it, do you storyboard your uh, your films yeah I do yeah. Uh, yeah and how elaborate are the sketches? It's, it's most when I started out with Pathfinder, I did an image for all, all these setups that we had, wow. even colors and even the style. Wow. Uh, now uh, I just do the um, storyboards for action scenes, you know, scenes that mm -hmm. involve uh, stunt and um, dangerous and difficult things. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, if, if it's just dialogue, I don't storyboard. And do you suggest people? Do, like go the Akira Kurosawa route and like paints everything like he did for Rain, or do you think just simple sketches work? Or what? What, what are your thoughts? A, a little bit. If you make with a, if if you're working with a theme, the mm. theme of the movie, then you will go and and, and try to to use colors, uh, costumes, mm. uh, the look, the uh, the facial uh, looks, and and those kind of things because it's the, the theme is what the movie is all about so i would go and do almost like a painting there hmm. uh, to have the uh, the feel and the image and the style of the whole movie but for uh, the rest i wouldn't be i uh, wouldn't use even use colors when i do um, sketches of uh, action scenes i wouldn't I, I don't use colors it's still, it's still like very very fast uh, drawings got it as, as an artist yourself who paints with the camera, do you miss using film? Uh, if I, do, do I uh, miss museum? Do you, no, no, do you miss using film, like film stock as, as an artist yourself? Yeah, I, I think film is, is an art, a piece of art because it's something that we are been struggling and trying to, um, to, to give an impression of the time we are living in. 
yeah yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. so it's, it's like for me uh, a movie is like uh, yeah it's like art no I that's, that's beautiful but what I meant is like do you miss using like 35 60 millimeter versus shooting digitally oh yeah yeah no I, I usually now we should shoot digitally but uh, yeah. for like uh, I, I, I worked with, uh, with film 35 uh, millimeter until mm -hmm. 2008 that was oh. the last time we shot a movie on, um, on on film it's more expensive for sure yeah, it's more expensive, but it's so much nicer. It's so much nicer. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. It's yeah. always fun to uh, go to a movie theater where they play it. It's so rare, though. Yeah, exactly. So I, I love to see us, them people do shoot movies on, uh, on film. Yeah. I love to watch them. All right. Well, Nils, thanks so much for your time. I really enjoyed uh, your documentary. Uh, before I let you go, uh, can you tell me what we can expect with your next narrative film, which is called uh, Sulis? Yeah, it's about uh, miners uh, taking mm -hmm. control over their own lives. It's a start of the Nordic model. If you ever heard about the Nordic model, you know, uh, the system, political systems that we have in Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and mm -hmm. Finland. Uh, we have a lot of social security things, and mm -hmm. we have, uh, yeah. you know, the workers are, we are paying a, a, a lot of high taxes, but we have a yeah. very good security. That's the Nordic model. And this is when did this model start? So this is a start of the Nordic model. Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah, that's it's very cool. interesting. Okay, well, good stuff. Well, thank you so much and have a great day. Yeah, thank you very much.